All right. This is the other video that just cuts right to the chase. So I'm thinking that some people want a lot of background. They want an intuitive understanding of calculus. That'll be the other video. This particular video is the TLDR. All right. Calc 1. What is it that you need to know? And how do I actually do it? Let's cut straight to the chase with this particular one. All you need to learn is the power rule in order to find the derivative of a particular function. So let's suppose the function that we're talking about could be 3x squared. All right. The way that the power rule works is, all right, well, the derivative of 3x squared is just this. You have to take the exponent, bring it down out front, and then subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, so this 2 is going to come down out front, and you'll have 3 times 2, and then it's x. All right, now it's going to be 2 minus 1, so that'll be x to the 1 power. If we were to simplify this, f prime of x, which is just a short way of actually writing the derivative, that's just going to equal 6x. Okay, if we were to do another example, all right, as long as, you know, as long as we're here, what's another function we could do? Let's do one that's a little bit more complicated. All right, let's try, I don't know, five. Uh, here, we'll do this. Five over um, three x cubed. There we go. Five over three x plus cubed. Uh, five over three x cubed. Okay, simple, simple enough. Let's actually put this, uh, you know, in terms that we can understand. We just need it as some real number times x to a power. Then we can use the power rule. So another way to write this could be 5 over 3 in a burrito and then x to the negative 3. So I can pass this x cubed up top and change the sign. Guess what? I'm allowed to use the power rule with this one too. So the derivative of this is just going to be 5 thirds times negative 3 and then x, well, what's negative 3 minus 1? It's going to be minus 4. All right, now we just want to simplify it a little bit. The 3s are going to cancel out. And we'll be left with negative 5, uh, x to the negative 4th power. We can rewrite that to make it, look, make it look a little nicer. This could be negative 5 over x to the 4th power. All right. That is the TLDR of everything that you need to learn in the standard level 12th grade math. Apparently it's the power rule and that's it. But there's a lot more to calculus than just the power rule. Obviously, if you, t if you start Calc 1 in college, you're not actually going to start with the power rule, all right? Where you take the exponent and you bring it down and you subtract one from the exponent, okay? You're actually going to be starting with the idea of a limit and moving on with that. Now, the second half of this, well, the second uh, part of this video, let's actually go a little bit more in depth into what is the derivative and all that. So for those of you who just want to breeze on ahead and start your homework and you don't want to deal with the rest of the uh, lecture, by all means, you can pause, move on with life. However, for those of you who are curious and you'd like to learn a little bit more about what calculus basically is, well, first of all, you can refer to the previous video where we talk about the problems associated with trying to find an instantaneous rate of change. You end up with this fraction zero over zero, and that's a big problem. Uh, in order to get around that, some rather smart people like Sir Isaac Newton and uh, I believe the other one is Leibniz. They both, arguably, it's, argu it's hard to tell who exactly came up with calc the idea of calculus first, but I believe it was used for the study of planetary objects orbiting the sky. They needed to come up with a way of talking about instantaneous rates of change, so they developed calculus in order to talk about the planets. Ultimately, 
I'm going to actually start with an intuitive understanding of it and build our way towards the formal definition of a derivative. So what is a derivative? It is the slope, so that's rise over run at a certain point. So um, uh, it, it's going to be when this is going to approach 0 over 0. So the, the difference in the rise and the difference in the runs, it's going to approach 0 over 0 in some way. Okay, So the y's are going to come together and the x's are going to come together. Well, that's fine, but this isn't enough. What's another way to write this? Well, uh, it's going to be like y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. And uh, again, this is like we got to make sure that these two are going to come together in some way. So the y's are going to come together and the x's are going to come together in some form or fashion. OK, well, one way that we can write that is uh, actually another way of writing y2 minus y1. A typical way would be delta y divided by delta x. Delta, it's a Greek letter for basically D, and D stands for difference. That's why we use the letter delta, the differences of y's, the difference of y's, so delta y and delta x. Okay, well, if we know that y is dependent on x, you know, in some way, well, then we can just say what happens when the run approaches zero, okay? Because if this approaches zero, then and, and if we know that y approaches zero as well, then we can just talk about what happens when the delta x approaches zero. What happens when the run, the differences in the x's approaches zero? Means exactly the same thing. Actually, a better way of writing instead of the word run, we can say the limit as delta x approaches zero of delta y over delta x. This is actually a pretty acceptable definition of a limit, although there are much better ones. Um, this is actually pretty acceptable. All right, How would this actually work in real life? Well, let's actually use this definition to take a derivative right now. OK, and why don't we start with one that's kind of hard, one that you really cannot use the power rule on. Let's let, uh, all right, let's let y, since we're not dealing with functions, let's let y equal the square root of 2x plus 1. OK, uh, actually, a better way to write that instead of the square root of 2x plus 1, since square roots are kind of hard to deal with, we're gonna, just going to say that's to the 1 half power. All right. Let's suppose I don't know the uh, chain rule. I don't know the power rule. I don't know the product rule. I don't know all of these rules. I only know this definition right here. How do we do this? Well, it's a change in y. So how about I just start with, uh, OK, what if I could just find out what delta y is? in some form or fashion. OK. Well, if we think about it a little bit, uh, this is true when y is equal to y, you know? But what if we let that function move out a little bit, like delta y and delta x? So that means we're going to let y move up a certain delta y, and we're going to let x move to the right or the left delta x. All right, so let's add a delta y and a delta x for y and x. So that way we can actually solve for delta y and basically solve for delta x too. That way we can actually plug it into our full formula. So let's let y plus delta y. All right, cool. And we'll let this be 2 times x plus delta x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. OK. All right, uh, now all I got to do is just start playing around with it until I can get, I guess, delta y over delta x, right? Doesn't seem too bad. 
sorry. Okay. Um, all right. So my only goal really is I got to get delta y over delta x in some way. Uh, ideally, it would be nice if we could write everything in terms of one variable. Ideally, x. All right. Well, uh, for starters, how about um, let's actually substitute y here because we know that y is equal to 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. You know? Why don't we actually substitute that in here? So this y can just become uh, 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. Okay. Well, now I can do some pretty fancy tricks, can't I? I can subtract this from both sides and uh, I'll have delta y over here. That's going to equal 2x plus delta x over here plus 1 raised to the 1 half power minus 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. Now I believe the best way to do this would be through the identity a squared minus b squared. What is this? Yeah, that's right. We're actually going to apply uh, a pretty famous identity, which is a squared minus b squared. All right, but we're going to do this in a pretty clever way. All right. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this shows up on IB all the time. In fact, the SAT commonly uses this identity, which is this a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times uh, a minus b. Super famous. We're going to do that here, but we're going to do that by multiplying creatively by 1. All right? And uh, you have to really think hard here. We're going to let um, this basically be equal to a, and we're going to let this be equal to b. A and b, okay? And that's going to be this part of the equation. We're going to multiply it by a plus b, and then we'll get a squared minus b squared, okay? So, how are we going, why do we want to, how do we do that? How do we multiply that by a plus b? Well, we can't, but we can multiply it by one in a creative way. So, I'm going to let this be over one, and on the top, be sure to burrito the numerator. We're going to multiply by a plus b. We're going to multiply by a plus b. So that's going to be 2 times x plus delta x plus 1 to the 1 half power plus 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. So that's a minus b times a plus b. But we're multiplying all of this by 1, so we also have to have it in the denominator. Just copy it down. Don't overthink it. Plus 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. Okay, so I, I just need to play around with it until I can get delta x, you know, basically by itself. All right? Can't, can't really do anything with the original equation, but let's play around with it until we can actually get something usable out of here. All right, so looking at it, I got to do, well, at the top is just going to be a squared minus b squared, right? So coming back over here, I just got to do a squared minus b squared. Well, this squared is just one half squared, so basically this goes away. Delta y is now just going to be 2x plus delta x plus 1, then minus 2x plus 1. But if you look carefully, hey, uh, you know what this is? This is actually just 2x plus uh, 2 delta x. You know, I could just distribute this 2 to each one of these. What's 2x minus 2x? Well, you know what, let me, let me actually write the denominator too before I do that. The denominator is just a plus b, what we had over here. 
So this is going to be 2x plus 2 delta x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. And this will be plus uh, 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Seems fair. Hey, look. Uh, 2x minus 2x. These two go away. That's nice. Oh, 1 minus 1. So those two go away. And on the top, all I have is just 2 delta x. See? Pretty good. Remember, the goal is we got to get delta y over delta x. That's the goal. So on the top now, I have 2 delta x. Hey, isn't this nice? Uh, you know what this is? I can bring this delta x out. To the, uh, to the outside, you know? So 2 over this hot garbage times delta x. Hey, I can divide both sides by delta x, right? And my goal, as I said before, I just need to find out what is delta y over delta x. Okay? Now let me just put a little bit of extra room over here because I would like to write one last thing. I am trying to find the derivative. Okay, I have almost everything that I need. Remember, the definition of a derivative is, uh, in this particular case, what happens when delta x approaches zero? Well, let's take the limit. We're gonna set, we're gonna actually take the limit of both sides, the limit of delta x as it approaches zero, and this one is going to be the limit as delta x approaches zero. How do we take the limit? All we got to do now is we got to put this in terms of a function that we're able to do this, but then we just set delta x equal to zero. That's it. You got to you got to put it in such a way that you're able to actually plug in zero without actually dividing by zero. So that's what all of this is going to do. If we plug in zero right here, well, two times zero is just zero. So this goes away. And that's it. So on the bottom, I have 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power plus 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. So I have two of those. Okay? So over here, I took the limit already. So that limit thing is gone now. And it's going to be 2 over 2 times 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. These twos cancel out. And finally, the definite, uh, the, de uh, the derivative is just going to be 1 over 2x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. This is basically what you're going to see uh, in Calculus 1. The first few weeks, they're going to introduce the definition of a derivative, and you're going to have to show all of your work which, as you can see, takes up a whole board. It can take up a half a page. you got to show every single step. You plug in x plus delta x or something like that, and uh, it can take a pretty long time. All right? Uh, right, why don't we do one more cool example? All right, let's do one more. This one's the more famous, more popular version of the formal definition of a derivative. Same thing as what we had before, only uh, a little bit more succinct. We can actually rewrite the old formula as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x. This is basically our rise, our difference in x, our difference in y's, all over h. This is by far the most widely used definition of a derivative. Um, and uh, I think I go over it in the other video, but just in case you're wondering, do we actually need to do work with it? In high school, no. But if you go into college and you take Calculus 1, this is one of the first things that you're going to be dealing with here. Why don't we actually do a problem with this, you know, while we're here? You know, I feel bad that all we're doing is the power rule, so, you know, let's actually do something with it. Let's let f of x equal, let's say, x to the... I don't know, let's say x to the one-third power. 
What's the derivative? Well, let's start by plugging it in. Okay. Plugged it in. X plus H to the one-third power and X to the one-third power. Uh, this one actually might be too hard for high school. How about we change this a little bit? I'm going to actually change this to uh, X, X squared. We'll make it easier. Change this to X squared. We'll change that to X squared. So if we let F of X equal X squared, obviously if we do the power rule, we know that the 2 is going to come down, and this should equal 2x in the end. How do we actually prove that? Well, we would like to plug 0 in for h, but we can't, so we need to do something up here first. Okay. Well, uh, the top can be factored out a little bit, so that's nice. This will be the limit as h approaches 0 of x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all over h uh, on the bottom. Hey, look, x squared minus x squared. Okay. Hey, look, these there's there's an h here and there's an h here. I can factor that out. So over here, this could just become the limit as h approaches zero of h times 2x plus h over h. These h's cancel out, and we're left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h. Hey, I can, can, am I allowed to set h equal to 0 now? Yep. So that goes away, and the answer is going to be 2x. The derivative of x squared is equal to 2x. That follows the power rule. We're vindicated. All right, pretty cool. Um, I believe that's basically it. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a taste of uh, what formal calculus basically is going to look like if you go to college. Uh, it's not going to be as easy as just this stuff. Um, but, you know, I wanted to actually give you a chance to see what real college is like. All right.